What's going on people? Welcome to the United Stand. I've got another exclusive interview for you guys today. I want to give a warm welcome to Mr. Bozza, Mr. Bozzy, Mr. Mark Bosnich. Rent for all three. Rent for all three then. You did. Thank you very much, Flex. And thank you so much for having me on. And hello to everybody over in the UK. I miss you all very much. Definitely, definitely. And around the world, Mark. You know, we've got a global yeah, fan base here at United yeah, Stand. We've got some people where you are. A hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. We know that massive supporters clubs here, um, here in Australia especially the one here in New South Wales where I'm right here in Sydney, where they meet very regularly, not only for games, but uh, j just about general business and that as well. And they're, and they're absolutely fanatical, you're right. And of course, around the world, but um, I have a special spot, obviously, because I spent 20 years in the United Kingdom. And um, this has been a difficult time for everyone and and probably no, you know, as much as anywhere in the UK. So just to let them all know we're thinking about them. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when you speak about the New South Wales, actually, um, that, that fan group, when I went out to Perth, we, we played some uh, five-a-sides against them. We had a big fan meet-up um, against the Perth Supporters Club as well. It was from all over Australia. It was, it was absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, big yeah. up to all the Australians watching. Right, they're great. They really um, are great, yeah. Uh, you know, we wanted to get Mark on for a while. We've got a lot to talk about today. Um, you know, we're going to talk about the Dean Henderson, David De Gea situation, obviously yourself being a goalkeeper. I want to talk yep. about that. I want to talk about the golden squad that you played in, 99, 2000. You took over from sure. Peter Schmeichel. What was that like comparing yep. the two squads from then to now? I want to talk about Oli's new contract. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Mm. That that's kind of being broken at this time, transfers, um, and just general your time at United. So let's get straight into it, Mark, right? Okay. You're a keeper, right? Yeah. And... For you, how do you see the situation with the Dean Henderson, David De Gea situation? We've got Dean Henderson, young keeper, being given, seems like he's been given a lot of assurances of a future at Man United, but you've got David De Gea, big wages, a lot of credit in the bank, proved he's, he can do it. Mm. Um, are we are we worse off for having this competition or better off? How do you see it? I, I definitely think you're better off for having it. And and I'll tell you about that's strictly down to the evidence because if, if one week, you know, one was throwing them in left, right and centre and the other week the other one was, I'd say to you, Right now, Flex and everyone, look, obviously this is not a good thing for either of them because as I explained to you when I've spoken to you before, you know, the, the different characters, and, and that goes for our field players as well, but with goalkeepers especially. Some goalkeepers, um, say myself, for example, I know when I look back, even though at the time you always think to yourself it's always better just to have a clear run, you know you're going to be in every week, but you look back when you retire and you realise you have your best days when you do have somebody breathing down your neck or vice versa, if you like. Uh, but there are some goalkeepers who don't like that um, and, uh, you know, who don't like that. They like to be guaranteed as a number one position. It is a high-pressurised job in terms of the fact that when you make a mistake, 99% of the times it results in a goal. And, of course, when you're playing for, for a very big club, and that can that can cause real issues. In terms of uh, Henderson and De Gea, De Gea had a little bit of a you, – you'd have to say he set such lofty standards originally, you know, at the club – uh, and when they, you know, when he started making a few bloopers, which you do as a goalkeeper, there's no doubt about that. But when you've been at a club for so long, and you played so well, then people automatically uh, start to think, oh, he's lost it and so forth. And he had that little bit of a period. There's that period with the restart uh, last season and also yeah, um, and before, before that too. the restart. Mm. Yeah, before the restart as well. I mean, that one, I think it was at Watford. I think that was. Oh, that was uh, fell into yeah. the post. And I couldn't believe yeah. it, honestly. So, but. But I, I think he kind of, you know, I don't. I, I think he's kind of got back to, and you can, and, and that tells you the position of the team and so forth. I know there was a few doubts about him when I got knocked out of the Champions League, but I think he's he, he's been playing well enough um, to to keep his number one position. I, and I think Dean Henderson on the other side, every time he's come in, he's he's only shown one thing, which is that he he is pretty much ready to take over. There's no doubt about that, and that's an excellent position, in my opinion, for the club and for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to be in now. Sometimes, and you mentioned contract situations, there can be other things as well. Um, sometimes it's not all about a hundred, you know, you know, one hundred percent what goes on in the park. That's that's usually the main part, mm -hmm. but it's not all about that. So there could be other things going on in the background, which 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 we all are not privy to, which can only we can only guess at. But right at this moment in time, I don't think David De Gea has done, um, w you know, bad enough. You know, in terms of like from on a consistent basis to warrant him being left out. Now we know he's not presently in the team, mm. uh, but that's for for, for personal uh, uh, reasons. Uh, and Dean Henderson is playing really well. But I'll, I'll leave this little caveat for you. Like you know, if, uh, you know they're playing. For example, they're going to be playing AC Milan, and that's in in the, in the second leg. You know, that game could very well go to penalties. Um, they've got Leicester in in the FA Cup in these cup games, which 
you know, it, you know, if he has an absolute blinder, say in one of these cup games, or, or it goes to penalties, he ends up becoming the hero or something like that. Then it'll be very, very difficult for Ali Gunnar Solskjaer to leave him out. Mm. So I said, whereas both goalkeepers, I said I haven't done anything really consistently wrong to leave one of out. I don't think either of them recently, anyway, especially Henderson, because you're talking about he's the number, he's the incumbent number two, have done anything to really be like you could say that was absolutely amazing. If they do do that, either, but especially Henderson. Then that's going to be the sixty-four million dollar question or pounds, as you guys would say. Yeah. Um, whether or not he keeps him in, so that's going to be really, really interesting. This is why it's such a really big opportunity, I think, right now for Dean Henderson. Do you think the club uh, and Oli in particular are feeling the pressure on this one in terms of when I say that, I mean that they chose to bring Henderson back. They obviously yeah. believe in him. You don't give him a five-year contract and come out in in press conferences saying, "Don't you worry about Dino. He's going to be United number yeah. one. He's going to be England number one." He did say that, but mm. in the media here. Um, I, but there's been a lot of people, you know, we discuss it here in the United States as fans around the world, that yeah. is a lot of this kind of exacerbated by the media of, of this country. We've got the Euros coming up. We've got a young yeah. English keeper in this country who's at Manchester United. Yeah. He's proved he can play in the Premier League. They're kind of pushing that all the time. It's almost right. like you're forgetting De Gea's credit in the Brexit. bank. I've got, I've got to say to you, man, that's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. And, um, and I know that from my time over there as well, you know, and, and as much as the fact that I came when I was 16 and I was uh, wherever I was, or it'd be Manchester, Birmingham, London, I was pretty much treated as, a, a, you know, very similar to an Englishman. Mm -hmm. But when things come down to it, I, you know, it, it was totally understandable. I can understand it totally. I wasn't, you know, I was an Australian of, of Croatian background type of thing. I could understand. And you could see the difference then with young like young English players coming through. Exactly. But then coming back here, coming back here to Australia, I see that as well uh, when they give young Australian players a chance, you know, and that goes for all sports. You can see the little bit of the uh, inherent bias, which you'd probably say is acceptable. I'm sure it happens uh, in Italy. I'm sure it happens in Croatia. I'm sure it happens in America, uh, Chile, wherever it is. That's, it's only understandable. It's their home country. It's an exciting young player coming through, whether it be Dean Henderson or somebody else. And I do sense that. There's no doubt about it. I sense that with managers. You know, if it's yeah. a British manager, for example, I sense that sometimes they get a little bit more leeway than a foreign manager would. And and look, that's just that's just a part of it. And I think that's understandable. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but the, the main point, and to answer like your earlier question in, during that point about Manchester, I think it puts them in a very strong position. Um, and I think that's been the aim, not only with uh, the goalkeeping situation, um, but you know, with, with the Pogba situation as well. So I'm a great believer uh, in Paul Pogba. I, I went pretty much a lot against the stream in that, in, in terms yeah. of Manchester supporters, because I my my point is this: that I truly believe number one is a world class player. There's no doubt about that. And the other point I, I used to say to a lot of Manchester United supporters, and in, in forums very similar to this, is that you know who would you get to replace him? But exactly. I think one of the you know what, you know one of the things that Ollie's done very well is that, and I think he needed to do that with the whole team was that to make, yes, players are important, but to make the team be able to play in certain ways that they don't have to rely too much on one player, whether that be David De Gea, whether that be Paul Pogba, whether that be anyone, that they can adjust. And I think he's done that very well. And, and I think that goes to the goalkeeping situation. So whereas in the past, like we know, it was like, surely we've got to re-sign De Gea. I mean, who else are we at? We're going to have to go out and spend... I mean, they spent how much did Chelsea spend on Kepa? That was like 70 odd, 70 odd million. million. Yeah. If yeah. you're talking about that and you've got to replace someone like De Gea at that time, especially, you would have said 80 million pounds. Well, they've done that in terms mm. of Pogba as well. And that was one of my points. You know, who are you going to go and get to replace him? Well, he's irreplaceable, in my opinion. But what he's done is he's made the team being able to adapt when he's not involved as well. And that comes back to the goalkeeping situation. And I think he's done that very, he's managed that very well. But do we risk, do we risk then? Dean Henderson going um, and saying, if I'm not number one by the end of the season, and I'm not saying he's right for doing that, but the noises I hear from Dean Henderson, I have a couple of friends who have interviewed him and have spent some time around him and make no mistake, like you say, he believes he should be number one and number one right now. Me personally, I'm like, okay, Dean, you've, you've been at Sheffield United. You've done fantastic. As you know, Mark, being between the sticks, 75,000 at Old Trafford is a yeah. complete different ball game. And that's no disrespect and, to, say, Aston Villa or anyone. No, it's no, a different no, ball no, game. No, no disrespect to Sheffield United. We'll put it this way yeah. as well. Um, goalkeeping for a team when you get very little work. In other words, the, the, the moments that you have, you might have four or five moments at a, at a club like Manchester United. And you've got to be exactly spot on. That is completely different yeah. and so much harder 
than goalkeeper for a team like Sheffield United when you're probably one of the most busiest players on the park. Yeah, that's why Nick Pope has so many that, clean sheets yeah, or now, so many I'm saves. Not, I'm not something. saying that's easy for a goalkeeper, no, that, but it's, it's so far as I'm concerned, that's that that's a, it, it, it makes it so much it, it's more difficult because you know mm. you, you know that's what you train for you want to make saves do this and that and the other and whatever. but but all of a sudden when you got you know when you might have something right at the beginning just say for instance you come for a cross right at the beginning somebody gets ahead of you they go one and you've got 60 minutes to wait around <laughs> then that's a real that's that's more of a test for especially from a mental perspective so mm. i hear exactly where you're coming from and that's what and i i'm in agreement with you really because that's why i said i don't think De Gea right this moment in time has done enough on the park like i said let, let's just keep in brackets the off the park things you don't yeah. know yeah uh, done enough consistently wrong to 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 warrant um dean henderson being number one however the caveat is like i said ac milan it's one one uh, we go to extra time. He's we go to penalties. He saves the day in penalties. Then I think that could be a different story. Mm, yeah, it is really interesting. Before we move on, I mean, you look at Dean Henson's actually had his first experience um, of that scrutiny. Uh, I know there were no fans at Old Trafford, but last minute against AC Milan, he's got to do better with that header. He'll know that. Um, and it's it then he's he's experiencing basically what that pressure feels like to actually be here. You know, and that's yeah. not even the top top level yet. We're not even in the Champions League yet. Yeah. Um, no, so, no. yeah, no um, doubt, be no before doubt. we move on, Mark, what's your last piece on that in terms of your gut feeling? Who will be Manchester United's number one come the 21-22 season for you? Uh, gut feeling right now is I think David De Gea will still be. Yeah, but again... And, and, and Henderson will still stay? Well, I, I think he does because, as you mentioned at the start, it's a five-year contract this time. So, <laughs> he can, you know, they can turn around maybe and loan him out. But what about if you know, Flex, they turn around and say, okay, you can go for £50 million. Pounds. So do you really think somebody right at this moment in time, especially during this pandemic, you know, people got to realise that, you know, combined, I think, last season, the Premier League clubs lost something in the, in the range of £700 million combined. People can only go on so long like that, regardless of how big the, a bigger club or bigger corporation you are. So things have slowed down. We know that. So, But Manchester United have signed him. And, and you know what? The bottom line is the players signed the five-year contract knowing all this. Yeah. So they can just turn around and say, well, okay, but if you want to go, completely understandable, but we want 50, 60 million yeah. pounds. And he's right going to play for you time, now. I couldn't, you know, I don't think there were, well, there'll be, uh, there are not too many sides that will be able to afford that, definitely beneath Manchester United. But if you're looking around at the top clubs, which other top club around Europe, say, example, would turn around and go, okay, you know what, we'll do that for a goalkeeper right now. Yeah. Maybe before the pandemic, no doubt about that. But right now, no. And I do think eventually he will take over. There's no doubt about it. He's what he's 24 years of age. Yeah, you know, um, you know, he, you know, if he, he as a goalkeeper, you keep yourself in shape. He's got he's got a minimum of another 10 years to go on that. And I can understand the pressures from everywhere. It, it, it should come down. I'm sure it will to you know how they do on the park. But that's just my gut feeling. Just to answer that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, man. Um, okay, moving on. So, like I said, we're going to talk about the kind of golden squad that you played in. Yeah. Um, and what some of those players were like versus kind of how far we are off that now and how you see us now in, in yeah. comparison. But, you know, if I take you back to 99-2000, winning the league by a then record 18 points, leaving yeah. Arsenal in the wake, you took over from Peter Schmeichel, you know, yeah. there was competition. It was kind of like you were the David De Gea that season. There's competition <laughs> brought, in, brought in, you know, all of a sudden you're like, yeah. oh, I'll take it over from Schmeichel here. You know, I'm doing my thing. Yeah. You know, Van der Gaal turns up, Taibi turns up. So you, you had that threat, but, you know, we yeah. went on to win the league that year. York, Cole... Beckham, Skulls, Giggs, yeah. the list goes wonderful, on. I mean, Keane. Wonderful, wonderful team. Um, wonderful, wonderful time as well, like like you mentioned. A real honour for me to take over somebody like Peter Schmeichel, who was my hero growing up, you know. Mm. Um, and uh, in, in terms of, like I said, the success, yeah, like 100%. I think Manchester City only only just beat that record a couple of seasons ago when they won the league by 19 points. Mm. Only lost three games all season. But that success had been built over a long time. There's no doubt about that. And also winning the World Club Championship was was very, very important, not only to the club becoming the first British club to ever do that, but also to myself personally, because growing up here in Australia, that game was always on TV and was at a much better time zone um, than it was anywhere else <laughs> in the world because Japan is only a couple of hours out could of watch that it. time zone. Yeah, so, so that, was, that, was, that was very, very special. We then. didn't play in the FA Cup this, that year, did we? Uh, no, we went to Brazil for yeah. that. Uh, I remember that being a controversial made, thing. Yeah, FIFA made it like this World Club Championship. And they, even though we already won, they used to call it the Intercontinental Cup and now they renamed it against Palmeiras. We had to go again in, in Rio, in Brazil, uh, to, to to take care of that. So, um, 
yeah, that was uh, that that was that was funny. It was all it was all cobbled in. But coming back to the characters of the team, you mentioned a, a lot of those players. Dwight, obviously, I'd known he was my best friend for years at Aston Villa. Yeah. And, and for me, I, I don't think perhaps he gets enough credit for what he achieved. I thought for me, he was the icing on the cake for that team that season, um, the season before when they won the treble. You know, yeah. they, they've always and then I, I spoke about this tonight when I went on Sky Sports News um, in terms of the progress of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, which which what we'll get to. I, I actually think he's you know he's really is on the right track, and you know and he's built a really good team. But just like the great teams of the past that Manchester United have had, let's go back to the original one. You have to say when they broke the Premier League duck and won their first title what, since the late 60s, back in 1992-93. The icing on the cake that season was Eric Cantona. You know, for me, the season before, the icing on the cake was Dwight. They always had great building blocks. You mentioned yeah. some of those building blocks. Maybe Cole. it's Bruno now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But they've got those building and, and coming back to as well, to originally what I said about with Pogba as well, the one of the, mm. I think one of all his greatest achievements thus far is, is making the team not so reliant on him because... There were times, like I said, and, and I've spoken to you before, when I spoke to you before off air, I'm a great fan of Paul Pogba, and I do mm. believe he is truly world class. I, I, um, But the only thing I used to worry is about when he was missing. And I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has worked out a, a system for the team and a way of playing that we don't miss him as much when he's not there. Because, you know, you always got to plan for the fact that players are players, you know, that maybe one day they, they will not be there. Um, but Manchester United, like I said to you, even if you go back to... You know, when they had the likes of Rooney and Ronaldo, there was Tevez, there was Berbatov. You know, there was you know there was always that little bit of an add-on, and I think that's all what they're looking for, to be honest. And and that that squad, like I said, it had a wonderful team. You know, Yapstam, um, um, Gary Neville at right, but Dennis Irwin, who was probably Dennis one Irwin. of the most <laughs> players I ever played with. Unbelievable. Paul Scholes, of course, Roy Keane was a phenomenal, very well balanced team. Giggs, uh, who was the best player I ever played with, uh, David Beckham, Dwight, and but even Ollie. Uh, Ollie and Teddy. I was going to say you played with Ollie as well, yeah. Yeah, what what a what a pair of you know what a pair of strikers to go to when when things went you know and uh, and it, it was it was a different era in terms and I've spoken to a lot of ex teammates who who are now managers, some are not managers now, but so are now yeah. managers, and they they verify basically what we all know because I don't know how old you are, Flex, but I, I'm I'm 49 now. 33, I, I am, mate. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Well. Yeah. It's not very close. But you you look at the the younger generation. I, I don't like to sort of pummel them too much because everyone's different. Because when we were yeah. growing up, people used to always sort of have a go at us. So, oh, you're different. <laughs> so far as I'm concerned, it's not better or worse. You only find that out later on. But it's just different. But a lot of ex friends of mine who are, are in management have said that it is very different in terms of the fact that what you know in our day, if you got criticised heavily, even by your teammates. It was taken more deep down as a compliment. You know, that a compliment was a compliment. That was taken as a compliment. The only time they used to say to worry was when they didn't say nothing to you. But apparently, these days, if you do that, you know, to the to, to somebody in the dressing room, they put their headphones on, and if they're powerful in the dressing room, three or four of them follow them. You know, that you lose them. So that's completely mm. different. That's something that's completely different. But I think, like I said, that's a generational thing, and whether or not long term that will be. For the good or, or or for not so good, we'll, we'll only be able to tell. But you've got to you've got to roll with it. You've got to adapt to it. In my opinion, do you think we're um, missing that? You know when you said about um that that you know there was there was there was Ollie, there was Dwight York, there was Cole, there was you know when you said about that. Do you think we're missing that competition up front now? If we, if we kind of bring it to a striker situation, we're talking about Haaland and stuff. Yeah, little little bit, little bit. I mean, we're, we're close to Sancho. Like the club was close to signing Sancho. Okay, so that mm. would have that would have provided even more competition up front. I've, I've noticed as well. Obviously, watch your show and 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 forums and go through it. And people are starting to talk about you know, Anthony Martial. Yeah. But see, I don't see Anthony Martial as 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 that the icing on the. I see him as one of the building blocks. I think he's important for the team. But I think they need an icing on the on, on the cake. You know, somebody that's going to come and then. Sort of, you're going to go wow, like Cantona did, like Dwight did in, in that season before I was there. Um, mm. You know, the, the list goes on if you like. You know, um, in terms of having that that one, it's just going to sprinkle that magic dust to make it all come together. Um, you know, Cavani is is been for me, he's been very good, and it's sort of like it's like a little bit of a, a model if you like of say this is where we need to go towards, and that's why you mentioned Harland and people like that, or. You know, and and there's no doubt about that. Those players would be absolutely fantastic to happen. And, and we've seen that we've been a bit light since Lukaku's gone to Inter Milan. We had to get Iglaho last year when when um, Rashford was struggling with an injury. Everyone's always after that 
that that real main goal scorer. There's no doubt about that. But coming back to, like I said about the Pogba thing, the most important thing is that regardless of who's playing, that you have ways that basically that it's going to bring the best out in the team. And um, and and doing that, you know, and, and you've got to think about the real opponents, in my opinion, which are Manchester City. Um, Liverpool have fallen away dramatically this season. Um, whether they come back or not, I, I don't really know. Whether the manager mm-hmm. will stay or not, I don't really know. But Manchester City, for me, is the real... And if you look at, you know, the, one of the main things about Manchester City, and it used to be about Manchester United, but, you know, even when I was there as a youngster, the, the scoring goals part, you can always get, you know, you can always set a team up to keep a clean sheet. You know, that's, you can ask that's any manager. That's the easier part, yeah. Like scoring goals is, and is what, is what the game is about. And right now, at this moment in time, even though we've, we've had a fantastic record under Oli against them, um, you know, that's going to be something that, that Oli and his coaching staff are going to be thinking, thinking very deeply about because teams catch on to other teams very quickly in the Premier League, in world football in general, but very quickly they, they work you out and you have to come up with different ways. Um, before we kind of move on to, to um, what we are looking for this summer and how we can improve this squad, you talk about Pogba keeping on, keeping hold of him when he's not mm. there, etc. Haaland, you know, centre-back situation. We're going to talk about that. But before we move away from that, the likes mm. of the Keen, the Skulls, the Becks, the Giggs, I noticed that you said Giggs was the best player you ever ever played with there. Is that it for you? Done. He's, yeah. he, he is the best. Oh, well, look... Uh... Yeah, he's well. So far as so far as I'm, I saw him first when he was probably about I think fifteen or sixteen uh, at the cliff at the old training ground. Yeah, and I, I'd liken it to maybe somebody seeing Jack Nicholas swing a club for the first time, or Tiger Woods, <laughs> or somebody seeing you know, Novak Djokovic hitting a club. And I remember Sir Alex coming around because we're at the training ground saying, "Watch this young kid! Watch this young kid!" And uh, and and for me, he he was, you know, and I was very fortunate, not not just the players that you mentioned. I played with, you know, the likes of Gianfranco Zola, you know, Marcel Desailly, people like that as well, Paul McGrath, um, top, you know, even Dwight York, you know, like mm. so I was very, very lucky, you know. Um, uh, but for me, he he was he just had that little extra bit and uh that 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 can really make a difference. There's no doubt about that. Um and uh, yeah, he in terms of who I played with, I I would put him at the top. Yeah, he was a fantastic player. But and you know that that us in that in that generation, I mean, we could do a whole show just on that of how good we were. <laughs> um, but we're not going to be, you know, UK gold on the National History Channel. You know, because, you said we're only going to be forty five minutes. But the way I started to ask, I knew we were going to be an hour. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter, mate. We just we just go with it. Um, on to uh, transfers, and then on to Ollie's new contract. We'll do transfers just real quick. Um, you know, this summer, what what are the priorities for you? There's been a lot made from United fans saying. This centre-back partnership between Lindelof and Maguire isn't working. Some no. people have been really critical of Maguire. Um, yeah. One, how do you see that? Do we need a centre-back? A defensive midfielder, a lot of people yeah. are asking for. A right-winger, like you said, we were close to Sancho. And the stuff with Haaland as well. Where there's a lot to get. <laughs> and like you said, with lots, the pandemic, lots, there's going to be a lot we don't get. No about that. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's start at the back and move forward. Um, yeah. I actually saw an interesting stat. I think it was yesterday saying that I think Maguire, regardless of what anyone said about it, has been involved in, in I think it's 25 clean sheets uh, in, uh, in, in, in a, a very short period of time. And I can understand, let's go back to the, the, the Man City game earlier on uh, in the season at, at Old Trafford. And you, you could tell, I know the two teams were, were close in terms of the league position, but you could tell that, that Manchester City were, were just a little bit better when it really, really mattered. Fast forward then to Eddie, Eddie had. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, right in the middle of, and this is what really holds hope for me, right in the middle of Manchester City's fantastic run. I, I thought we played that game absolutely. We did. To the T, to the T. And the massive part of that was the, the, those back two. Now, um, you know, the one thing I'll be noticing, you know, I'll look through every week and about the teams and, and people who play and so forth. They had been very, very steady with that with that partnership with Lindelof and Maguire. I wasn't one hundred percent so I used to always think that Bally should be uh, involved. Some a lot of people way. think, yeah, yeah. Um, but but it seems as though Oli's gone for that and one Bissaka. Luke Shaw's been absolutely outstanding. Uh, you know, really has he? He really deserves special mention. And then those type of combinations take time with the goalkeeper behind them as well to to gel. Um, whether or not that they are the partnership that will go on to hopefully win the championship, that, that's a very good question to ask. And right at this moment in time, I would give them that opportunity. Coming back to what we said, and we'll, we'll go straight now from there, we'll, we'll, we'll leave the midfield and we'll come back to that. To the front, I think the front is where the priority should be. I really do think if you want to push that little bit further, 
the front is where it should be. Like I said, we've had a little mural, if you like, model in terms of Cavani, the, the, the type of player. I mean, Cavani is a type of player. I mean, he maybe not as quick as he was in his younger days, but it's still he can go in behind. He can come forward. He can be a target man if you need him. And I really do think that you've seen a lot of times the younger boys, the Green was the, Rash the Rashfords, Marshall to maybe to a lesser extent because he's more an individual player himself. He can bring the best out of those type of players. So if you can put all that together, yeah, early Harlan would be an absolutely fantastic uh, uh, acquisition. There's no doubt about it. I'm not so sure but that he, that he that you should uh, put all your eggs in one basket. I'm not so sure that he will come. So there's a whole host of forwards around Europe that they could look at and, and in the UK. But for me, that should be the priority. It's and interesting like you say that because a lot of fans are saying, you know, that the centre-back is the priority or the, or the defensive midfielder is the yeah, priority. No, not You're me. saying... For not, you, not for me, striker. striker, striker. Like I said to you, coming back to what I originally said to you, I can always set a team up if I really want to to keep a clean sheet, okay? The game is about goals. I want to know that we have a team, um, well, so we're, Manchester United have a team that can always hurt the opposition by scoring, okay? Uh, that, that's that, that's me. I know there's other people that are different. Remember, Marino is a classic. I build the house <laughs> and the foundation. Yeah. Like, for me, I'm, I'm completely different, and I've been brought up in a different era where I'd still much rather be as a goalkeeper playing yeah. the game that was exciting that we won 4-3 than a boring nil-nil, okay? That's interesting as well. Yeah, That's, you know, well yeah, I was, yeah. When I came over to England at 16 uh, at, at Manchester United, that, you know, that was instilled in us um, by, by the late Eric Harrison, Brian Whitehouse, Sir Alex, um, that, you know, with the tradition of the Busby Babes and all that. And they used to always say, even you as a goalkeeper, so you got you got into that mode, you know. And like I said, and, and I always think to myself as well, what I don't like playing against. Well, you know what? I don't like playing against a team that I know can always hurt us. You know, if a team are like, okay, they're very tight, they're very stingy, okay, no worries, I'll, I'll, accept, I'll accept that. But if I know a team can always hurt us, you, you can never relax. And I really do think that that, that should be the priority. To defensive midfielders... Look, there was a time, you know, when when uh, probably about a couple seasons ago, when you know when we'll you know when Pogba it was hard to get the best out of him, and yeah. people were asking how, and I thought, well, you know, when did when was the time that he was, you know, obviously Juventus, he was excellent, but sort of more recently, I you know, this is why I was a couple of years ago, France in the World Cup, uh, and the two players, I think it was uh, Umtiti and Kante, were playing right next to him. Mm. I, I'm sure I'm not a hundred. No, he was saying, but it was Matuidi. Huh? Was it Matuidi? Matuidi and um. No, Matu. That's it. Matu. Yeah, that's yeah. Matu. No, Matu yeah. was the, the centre back. Yeah, yeah. And I actually thought at that time maybe go and get one of them too, but I actually think look, I I think that's a less of a priority because the way that they've set up the team and how adaptable it is. Um, Fred's underrated so far as I, so is McTominay. Uh, you know, I think people should understand the, exactly the job that they do. Bruno Fernandes has been arguably one of the best signings in the whole Premier League in the last couple of seasons. Yeah. Uh, and they've got other options as well. Um, I, I really do think that that's less of a priority. The, you know, the biggest new signing, if you could say now, would be Paul Pogba coming back from injury. You know, <laughs> you, you've got what arguably one of the, the best players in the world, um, you know, getting ready to come back to injury. It's only going to make the team better. Um, so, but for me, the, the priority is up front. You know, they've got to, they've got to find that little sprinkling that's going to turn them from a team that you think maybe we could, maybe to a team like, you know what, we can. Because like I said, and I did uh, when I did my Sky, Sky Sports thing, it's not like in the old days where, you know, maybe up until Roman Abramovich's Chelsea, uh, Manchester United had the biggest, you know, had the biggest uh, resources and checkbook in the Premier League. There was a there was that couple of years there with Blackburn, with the late Jack Walker's Blackburn when they, and they took the title. Newcastle came close, but really... Manchester United had that financial clout. In we were the powerhouse, weren't we? Yeah, and yeah. At, they haven't. They, they, you know, that's not that's not the case anymore. And mm. uh, it's, it's Manchester City have got much more financial clout. We know that. So, so, but there are players out there, as a lot of other foreign managers will come to the league have shown. There are players everywhere. You just got to make sure that they that they can fit the right requirements for what you want. So, yeah, by all means, Haaland or Mbappe. Go for it, <laughs> but if for, yeah, for whatever reason it can't be, then 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 there are other players out there that you can. You've know, seen that time and time. How many times we've we seen a player? We'll say, well, where did they get him from? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that's what I mean. The scouts got to do their jobs. Yeah. Well, you got to go and yeah, find exactly. these gems everywhere, South America, everywhere. No matter no matter where it is. Yeah, there there, yeah. Are, there are players there. So, but that would be my priority. Okay, and lastly, before we move away from the transfers, do you think Paul Pogba will stay? I know you've kind of come to him yeah. quite a few times in this interview. What's your gut feeling on that? Uh, look, my heart, I'd love him to stay. 
Um, and, I, and, I, and I used to think that was the case the last couple of years, but I've just got my head starting to sway towards the fact that they, perhaps he may leave. Mm. Um, I, I really hope he doesn't um, because, like I said, you know, for me, he's, I, I know a lot of people, they they I, they see him one way or they rub them, they, he rubs up people the wrong way, but mm. I just look at him for, for what he is in terms of he's a phenomenal footballer. You know, people sometimes say, oh, in the big games, he should be running games and this, that and the other. Yeah, okay, but, you know, the bottom line is a lot of times, you know, when you talk about some of those big games, again, I said a lot of supporters, I think, especially for Manchester, I think it's it's not the 90s anymore or even the early 2000s or whatever. And that there's so much more competition and there are teams out there right now at this moment in time and have been for the last five or six years who are, are just better teams. So how, how many times during that 90s, early 2000s era would you say, okay, combined team Man United and whoever it may be? Majority of time, you'd have six or seven players from Manchester easy. United. Actually, yeah, easy. Easy. actually, let's let's be uh, let's lower it at five. Yeah, now Minimum. if you do that, yeah. yeah. Now it's not it's so it's it's not as easy. But like I said, for me, they're always it's quite simple. I always ask one question: Are they a better team with that person in it? In terms of Paul Pogba, of course they are. I don't care what anyone says; of course they are. Mm. And 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 like you said, if he leaves. <laughs> that may become another priority because you've got to replace well, that creativity. Then, uh, yes, and, yes, then I would say, then I would say, okay, I, I would put that alongside the striker. Yeah, yeah if it, he goes, it wouldn't, yeah. Be, it wouldn't be as big as it was a couple of years ago. Because I think Oli's done a fantastic, and his staff have done a fantastic job of having of having the team adapt when he hasn't been fit or when he hasn't been able to play. Yeah. Um. And, and like I said, but a couple of years ago, I used to always say that. Well, yeah, who are you going to replace him with? Tell me. Yeah. Name yeah. me, no problem. And oh, okay. And by the way. Yeah, so Paul, if, if, if Paul costs what was it, ninety six million pounds? Who are you going to replace him with? Because they're going to cost quite close to that range. And again, post COVID, people have got to take that into consideration as well. Even mm. clubs like Manchester United, it's not going to be, you know, it's going to take a, at least two or three years, probably a little bit more, to sort of get back to some type of normality in terms of, in terms of the money side, because everyone's feeling it. Mm. And who can afford Paul Pogba as well? If Paul Pogba wants to leave, which I pre there is that, that thing that I think he probably does. I think COVID affected it the first time round. Then we that triggered the extension, which was the safe bet to do to protect ourselves financially. So he can't mm. leave for free this year. But there needs to be a decision this year because you can't have him going into this year running down that contract and hasn't signed a new one. So this well, is going to be interesting. Yeah, put it this way, if, if, if you let it go, if you let it go, I would say, and I've been in a similar situation. And why, why I think once you let it go, say, say the Christmas then you know, the player and the agent, I know myself. It's like, well, yeah. what's fine? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They've got all the power then. Exactly. Yeah. I understand. No problem. You like to say that to the club. He's going to say, well, why now? Unless you, act, you know, act, offer me something absolutely astronomical. Mm. Yeah, but the bottom line is as well, and, and and I don't know the man personally and all that, but, you know, there does come a time when players, when they, you know, when, they, when they're settled from a financial perspective, and it's more about who I want to play with what do I want to achieve? You know, I'm, yeah. I'm going now towards the twilight of my career. The vast majority of players want to win things. So exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Um, on to Ollie now, man. Um, someone yeah. like you said you shared the dressing room with, um, yeah. but away from Ollie the player, Ollie the manager. There's yeah. been a lot of reports that, like, you know, his his new contract is is kind of all but ready to be to be signed and sealed. Yeah. Um, a lot of Man United fans have said that you know we're not learning from the past. They're still. You know, we got a big week this week. We could go out to AC Milan, lose against Leicester, and then all of a sudden, all we've got is top four. And worst right. case scenario, we drop out of the top four. That's if your glass is half empty. Don't get me wrong. Right. Um, but then, you know, the optimistic people sort of saying, um, because well, what I've painted there is the worst possible picture of this week. Yeah, fair enough. You know what they say. <laughs> but it could happen. It could, yeah. Fair enough. Enough. There are exactly. people like, you know, it's my place. there are people who smile in the mirror in the morning like that, and they say, that's that, that, that's that done for the day. So you got to, they're, they're, they're there too. They're entitled to their opinion. 100 percent But the glass half full is listen, mate, we're second in the league. Did anyone really expect Manchester United to even be top of the league in January with where we're all talking about 21 in 21? Um yeah, no. you know, did we expect to be better than this Pep Guardiola Manchester City team? He's the best of the rest. Yeah. Um, we're still in two cup competitions, yes. and we've got Bruno, we've got Maguire, we've got Wambasaka. The, the, the transfers have changed. There's people that, that say that. So. With, with 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 both of them, how do you see that Solskjaer is in line for an extension? Do you, reckon, do you think that's the right thing? I, it's definitely a right thing. There's no doubt about that. And I've seen enough uh, over the what just over two years that he's been there. Um, and I noted as well Gary Neville saying today, "Oh, you know, he has to win a trophy." I, I, I 
I disagree. Does he? I, don't think he has to, mm. I don't think he has to win a trophy this season um, because, like you just said, you made a very salient point. They could be out of trophy contention by the end of this week, all right? <laughs> could be, so yeah. A lot of people are like, oh, you're just saying that because he's ex-teammate. Maybe so. I talked about before about general biases. But I'm going to say this. Let's talk about the evidence. Let's talk about it from a statistical point of view, say, for example. One of the greatest managers the club's ever had, Sir Alex Ferguson. Took him four years to win his first trophy. And I tell you what, he came there in 86. He won it at the FA Cup in 1990. That actual season he won the FA Cup, I've seen some vitriol in my time at football grounds, but the, the vitriol directed towards him um, was immense. The fact that he got through that and then the rest was history should speak volumes in terms of, and I know these days are different. People want things uh, much more quickly these days and all that. But just take a little bit of a leaflet out of the past in terms of maybe maybe learn a bit by that. He's been there for two seasons, full seasons, Ollie. Uh, I think the first season they finished, I think it was sixth. Mm. Uh, last season was third. Yeah, They're on line to finish second. There's still nine games to go. Anything can happen. There's no, no doubt about that. But so far as I'm concerned, that is progress. Um, and, and not only that, I know, and that's just from my perspective, I know what I see. I've seen progress on the pitch. I, I spoke about that they've become less reliant on you know on certain players. Uh, there've been some setbacks. There's no doubt about that. Getting that knocked out of the Champions League was very difficult. Um, but you know, there's also been some great moments, like beating you know, Manchester City, hitting the top of the table when no one really expected to, and they've had a taste of that. I think at the start of the season, if you said to anyone, you know, come around the you know Christmas January period. Manchester United are going to hit the top of the table. They'll go, you're mad. Yeah, yeah. 100%. They, they might say, yeah, they might hit the top of the table at the start of the season if they play on the Friday night and the rest of the league hasn't played. Yeah? So that is definite progress, and it has been difficult. It is when somebody's so long at a club, um, and, and, you, and you see that. You've seen that with Arsenal as well, Wenger, and so successful. It is difficult. But if for anyone, in my opinion, who hasn't seen progress, I, I don't you – know, maybe you're – Watching a different game, or maybe well, I criteria. Well, I'll, I'll I'll bring the argument to the table of you know I know a lot of people. I speak to a lot of fans. You know that's yeah. what we do here. And there are some fans who have this argument that well, the football's no better than it was under Jose. Under Jose, we finished second, way behind City. If we yeah. do that again, why is that classed as as um as success? Well, now, well, if, when it wasn't before, well, you know, yeah. the football we play, you know, how do you see that? Well, I, argument? Well, when Jose finished second, when Jose won his two trophies, I thought that was progress. But towards True. the end of his reign, I would say this to him, towards the end of Jose's reign, I, I don't know about you, Flex, and I would say the same to these supporters. I saw it going, like, you know, going yeah. there. 100%. Basically. He had to go. He lost the dressing room. Yeah. Uh, it, like, you know, I, I, I was like, well, this, the, the, they've got no other option here. He has to go. And the bottom line is, and why I say he has to go, because regardless, you know, at that time, I probably would have said so is seven or eight of the players. But generally, it is easier for a club to let one person go plus his yeah. staff than change the whole team. That's that's yeah. football, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I haven't seen that with Oli. If I started to see that with Oli, like I was watching very closely after they got knocked out of the Champions League. As much as I really do respect him and admire him as a person and love him as a guy, you know, I, I do a job in commentary over here. If somebody asked me a question, I would always give somebody like that a little bit more, like with Frank Lampard, ex-teammate, ex-friend. Yeah. I gave him a little bit more leeway. But in the end, you know, you have to go with what's in front of you. Or people just say, oh, look, he just looks after his mates. All right? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that yet with Ollie. I haven't seen that yet at all. And hopefully from Manchester United's perspective and, and his perspective and my perspective, I don't see that. But um, – it's a very salient point, but one one that you could always reply, like I just replied to them, and also the fact that, you know, one of the best teams at the moment anywhere in Europe, they beat them. They beat them on a, on a massive winning streak, and they beat them last week. For me, that is massive progress that I've seen in, a, in those seasons. Now, we may have this conversation in three weeks' time. They may have got knocked out by AC Milan. They may get knocked out by Leicester. They may drop out of the top four. And my answer will be different. I'll say, well, you know what? I was wrong. That's different. Yeah. Because results, results is a results game, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's happens, a results game. And, I was, and not, only, not only that, you know, it's like, not only was I wrong, there's a results for it. But I would say the way that they've been playing, I, it, 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 but I don't see that. I only see potential in the team. I don't see I don't see even at some of their performances were like, oh, it wasn't great today. But I still can see exactly what they're trying to do what they're trying to achieve, yeah? Mm. How well, some people say, though, some people say, though, you see when you say, 
But if we get to the end of the season and we're out of the Champions League and out of two cups, that's why some people are saying, why doesn't the club just hold fire? You know, they gave him the job after the PSG night. And my God, I was there. It was amazing. I was falling over seats, limbs yeah. everywhere. Brilliant. And I, as a fan, it's my job. Yeah. It's my job to be deluded sometimes as a fan. I don't make the decisions. I can say, that's give Oli the job. You know, Rio was saying, give Oli the job. We all said it. So yeah. what? That's great. That was, yeah. the, there was in the that was brilliant. Football. But then about some people are saying, 100%, I agree. Uh, yeah. But some people are saying, let's just learn from that in case something happens. Like what you just said, there's still, what, nine, ten games left of the season. A big yeah, well, week here if we get to the season. Like 29, let's have a look. Yeah, I think it's 20. There's nine games, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I, I can under, I can understand that totally. And in fact, if you and I were chairman and vice chairman, and we we're speaking about it, I'd probably actually say the same to you. If I go, yeah, I'd say, say, no, I'd say to you, are you going to go speak to me? Just see what he's, you know, just see what I, I would say. You know, but the thing is, if you've already initiated talks about an extension and you want to show the faith and you're happy with what things going, which I can completely understand because I would be. Mm. All of a sudden, right now, uh, especially after the way things have been going, if you go down now and see him on my behalf. And go. Oh, by the way, Ollie. Uh, you know, me and Boz were having a talk. We'll just leave it to the end of the season. Do you not think that that would be a mm. bit of an effect too? You know, you think if you imagine now, then if they did lose these next two games, if they did start losing, you turn around to me and say, "Why did you make me go and say that?" Because I was in those time before that. Yeah, yeah. That's so that's, that's what I'm true, saying. That's it's true. Initiated talks. Yeah. So we don't know. Again, coming back to the behind the scenes of football, we don't know which side has initiated the talks. But mm. just put that to one side, okay? Whoever has initiated talks. Talks have been ongoing, or else you wouldn't be talking about it. Mm. So all of a sudden now, if one either side, even if it was – imagine if Oli turned around and said, you know what, we'll leave it to the end of the season. I'd be saying to you, if if, you, if I was the chairman and, and you were the CEO, what's he up to? He must yeah. have something. <laughs> like, well, yeah, know, and right? if it's to the end of the season yeah. and you think about well, league, exactly league, exactly league. what you're saying is I'm actually a great believer. I'm with you. I'm a great believer in doing these type of things at the end of the season. Mm. Uh, you know, like, okay, if it's a player, you have to, you know, and they're coming to We did it with life. Jose. We gave Jose an extension at a period. Yeah. And I thought, oh, why? What's he done? But I wouldn't even, you know, I, 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 but the fact that talks have already started, I, I think really, like I said, the, the, the sooner it gets sorted out, the better. However, all those people who will be watching this who were saying the other side, if they announce that he signed a long-term contract and things go like that, they're going to go, we told you, we told you. That's They're, cool, co they're going to come for you, yeah, mate. But I, 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 I take that. For me, it's not as much a gamble because I know him really well and mm. for what I've seen. For others, it may be more of a gamble. I can understand that. But I, I, my, my advice would be, like I said, it, the fact that talks have started, it would be great if it gets done. But just don't let it be so much of a distraction because there's been big, big week and big games coming Massive up. Massive week. This is, this is yeah. do or die this week. I mean, there's either yeah. all to play oh, for or yeah. nothing. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. There's no doubt about that. Um, With the kind of restructure of the club that we saw last week, you know, yeah. John Murto coming in, football director, um, Darren Fletcher, technical, yeah. technical director or something like that. I think yeah. I remember. Um. I I said on the on a fan forum a couple of times that I believe that that's all the proof we need to show that they're believing in Solskjaer. You look at the team that's been bought around yeah, him. Yeah, Karen, you're right. Uh, Nicky Butt, you know, Darren Fletcher's yeah, only been there three weeks. I think you've got, well, you got, you know what you got to do to get a promotion in a normal job, Mark? You've got to hit targets. You've got to yeah. bill a certain amount of money. Darren Fletcher's come in. He's, yeah. he's, he's a coach for a bit. And then all of a sudden he's got this role. So, they're, they are keeping it in-house. What did you make of those structural changes? It's something that may yeah, not have never done before, I, but it's very in-house. Yeah, I, I, I can understand it completely. Um, and, and remember, the vast majority of things that, uh, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, as a lot of us did, learnt during their playing days about management would have been under Sir Alex Ferguson. He's very, he was a very much in-house person of people he trusted and so forth. Although I will say this, I don't think ever in a million years that Sir Alex Ferguson would have entertained the thought of having any type of football director because that would have been encroached on any type of display. He was the football director. He's everything. But these days are yeah. different. You've got so much to do and so forth. And any type of assistance, that's what I, any type of assistance um, that the first team manager can get, I think is, is very, very important. He's obviously got two trusted souls alongside of him. Um, I think the, the lines will be established in terms of being clear in terms of the chain of command, where it goes. And we do know at some clubs, unfortunately, technical directors, are, in my opinion, perhaps have too much say, you know, like, you know, in terms of signings and yeah. uh, 
And, you know, even sometimes in selections of teams, I, I really truly think that this will not occur here. Um, in terms of the both characters, um, Darren, neither, I, I don't know, neither. I've only heard good stories about both of them. But this is more, like I said, it's, a, it's, it's say, a modern-day assistant, but uh, sort of up, more up, up the way rather than assistant as in, like, well, no, I don't mean that disrespectfully, but yeah. assistant as in the coaching side. You know, you take care of the technical side, which whatever that may be, whatever they define that to be, uh, the other chap, you know, you go and make sure that basically that the board knows about this, the board knows about that. However they structure it to be, I see it exactly, I think you're exactly spot on what you said. It's 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 a sign that they're going to go forward with, with Ole. Um, and also a, a long-term sign for the club that, uh, that that's the way that they want it structured, which is absolutely fine. It's, it's understandable because the, the, the demands on a modern-day manager are so great. Um, that I, I think any type of assistance that, that can be had, I think is a good thing. Yeah, um, I, I, I agree with a lot of what you say in terms of, um, you know, Ollie's, we're in a good position. Like, if you're going to yeah. sit Ollie down and say, oh, Ollie, come in and sit down, mate, we need to have a chat, thinking about letting you go, he's going to say, I'm second, mate. Like, what who, what other manager gets gets second place with this team? Who? You, you yeah. tell me, sort of thing. Yeah. So, I, I get it in, in, that, in that sense. And, you know, if but we do go on to... You know, my, 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 like I said to you, I'm a friend with him and... and, and uh, I, I, I think, like I said, I, I, I've got not a bad word to say about it. And, and, I'm, and that, for me, that lends me to be a little bit biased and that, yeah. understandable. But if we're here in 12 months' time, you and I having this conversation and they're fourth and they haven't been good and they're knocked out of every cup competition, mm. there may be a different different story then, but they're not there. And I don't mm. care what anyone says. So some people might say, oh, I'm telling you they will be there. And you know what? 12 months, 12 months' time, they might turn around and say, see, I told you, Boz. But <laughs> you're guessing. OK, and yeah. just like, I, you know, I can only go off the evidence of what I've seen. Mm. Sixth place, I think third place, same amount of points. I'll get more points this season. If you go yeah. sixth, third, second, uh, OK, winning a trophy, like as with Gary Neville saying, oh, you have to win it. OK, that, you know, when you're in this position, that's a bonus. But, um, you know, you have to say in terms of some of the teams that are left both in the Europa League and the FA Cup, uh, although, we, we, you know, we put ourselves... Uh, you know, up there with the favourites. In I don't think we would be the favourite for either no. competition. Um, uh, the, the, you know, but the the biggest thing is the fact, like I said to you, they did hit the top of the table this year, regardless yeah. of what anyone says. Yeah, it was like they got to the top of the mountain, had a nosebleed, but it doesn't <laughs> matter. They had a taste of it, um, and now let's see for the years going on. It ain't going to be easy. We know that because of you know, Liverpool will want to come back, even though I still think like so a lot of things are in doubt in terms of what's going on this year, whether or not he changes the team whether or not their manager will stay. But there's another thing that's truly, in my opinion, not in doubt, and we saw it again this season in terms of Manchester City. I mean, they are a, they are a phenomenon. They've come back, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to take something extra special like we saw last year with Liverpool to, to actually get on top of them. So, But if anyone's – if he's in a good position, in my opinion, he's in a, in, a, in a decent position to mount a challenge. Does need, in my opinion, like I said to you, that, that signing that's going to sprinkle that magic dust on the whole team. Mm, yeah, a lot of a lot of fans have said to me, Flex, listen, I bought any plans for a centre back or a centre mid. Mm. If Haaland is on the market, drop everything and and get him. He's a generational talent. Well, he's got he a will get you the goals. Apparently, with him, you know. So yeah, um, you know, fingers. I worry crossed, about that but, sometimes though, because he tried before we went to Dortmund, and Erling went, nah, I'm okay. It didn't work yeah, then. Well, but I, I don't know. Hopefully, that's understandable. Now. You probably want, you know. The, the Dortmund are famous, and so is the Bundesliga True, in general for developing, for, football, yeah. for developing young players, and then they they sell them on, and this, that, and the other. They're not too many places in the world better to learn your football and develop at, mm. at Dortmund. You know, probably thinking at that stage of his career, I come to Manchester, I, am I going to start every week? Probably not. That's true, actually. And so, now the you know that I mean? he's um, never built, you know, he will come and start club. every game. Yeah, a massive club. I've got to produce straight away. You know, if you're if you're sort of you know handling him, if you're Mina Riola, and stuff, I don't think this is really good for you. We'll build yourself up to a point. Um, and of course, the, the, the uh, Dortmund would be over the moon as well. We'll sell you for over 100 million euros. Yeah, you know what I mean. When, when you're actually, well, then we'll see how you go. You're going to be playing in Champions League. Then, then we'll, you know, this is your next stage, so to speak. So mm. I, I could completely understand it. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, um, and you know what? Last thing, right? It's been time's absolutely flown. Wow, nearly nearly an hour already. I just I just got I'll you. Just, talk. you could, listen, mate. All our shows are an hour anyway, so I'm glad. I'm glad actually. That's 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 brilliant. Man. I'm it's not happy with this lighting in the background. It's making my face look too red. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> no, you look good, man. You're good. You're all right. You're all right. Um, for, like, but, you know, your time at Man United, uh, a yeah. great, a great, a, that, especially that season. You know, 
going from Aston Villa, you know, you played with York yeah. then and you ended up with him there uh, back at Man United. I know you started there as well when you were really young. Um, you know, do you have any re regrets about that time or how it, how it ended or what it was like or anything, yeah, you know, you was in the dressing room. Yeah, yeah you stuff. said that to me before. Really, not really. I, I, I just count myself as very, very fortunate to be, in, you know, to, to play for a team as one of the great, greatest teams, you have to say, in, in Premier League history. Won the World Club Championship with, for, for me, being Australian um, and being realistic, I, I kind of thought during my playing lifetime, so I don't want any Australians to watch this and get upset with me, but during my <laughs> playing lifetime, I had a feeling that Australia wasn't going to win a World Cup. So that was the closest thing I was going to get to it. So, so that was phenomenal. And winning the Premier League title was something that I always wanted to do. Crazy. And I always believed, even when I, you know, I had to leave the country originally, you know, because I couldn't get a work permit. So something that was yeah. nothing to do with on the pitch. I always thought, even when I was at Aston Villa, I had a great time at Aston Villa. Loved the Brummy people. That was great. But I always felt as I had unfinished business at Manchester United. And I was able to finish it. Very, very lucky. Mm. If any regret, well, probably did. You know, would have been probably uh, I probably should have stayed a little bit longer. But the bottom line is, you know, when you're in your career, it's like you know, this is one of the great things about football. That's why you talked about this conversation flying. So does so does your football career because you want everything yesterday. You know, you, you know, you've only got a certain amount of time. So, um, but no, I feel very very lucky, and very fortunate. If I didn't have that time and that spell, I wouldn't be able to you know talk to great people like yourself and all around the world about my times and about football. Very lucky. Yeah. No, brilliant. It, 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 no, it was an amazing season, amazing accomplishment. Like I said, when you look back on it, to say that that was you taking over from Peter Schmeichel winning the league the year after the treble was, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. Well, I, think, I mean, no, that, that, That's actually a good, good point that you made because I think a lot of people realise, and I, I'm sure Liverpool supporters, maybe not the ones from the past, but the, 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 the ones now, the, the younger ones that have grown up and saw them win the title after so long, and the players, and, and a lot of other people realise of how hard it is to retain the, the Premier League title. Proper. Well, that season was to retain the Premier League title, and we won it by a record amount of points up until exactly. two years ago when Manchester City beat. It's 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 not a, it's the hardest league in the world to win, in my opinion. But to retain it, as as Liverpool found out this season, it's a different story because you got Best that game. crosshair on you got that crosshair yeah. on your back, <laughs> and everyone's after, yeah. everyone, everyone, everyone's looking at when they play you that season as they want to knock you off. Best best game you played in? What was it? Either the Real Madrid game um, in the Champions League quarterfinal first leg. Unfortunately, I was injured. Goals the second league. scored. Uh, no, no. Neil scored Neil scored in the first league. Oh, Neil Neil they came back. Yeah. yeah, they came back and beat us at, at, at our play. I didn't play that yeah. game because I was injured. Um, or the Palmeiras game. Those those two weeks. Oh, leads away as well. Leads away in the league because and, and it was a good win too. Because even though I think. They were, we had games in hand of them, but they were still ahead of us in terms of that. So it was uh, that, that was good. So, so especially uh, uh, you know, they're uh, they're up there with in terms of rivals, um, uh, Yorkshire definitely. and uh, Lancashire. Yeah, definitely. Good for they're going to stay in the league this year, so we can get to Ellen Road um, next year. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Where listen, everyone's back. Where everyone's back and vaccinated. Yeah, exactly. Listen, Mark, it's been an absolute blast, man. Thanks for coming. Anytime. On. Anytime. Thanks, thanks, thanks for sharing time, it. Mate. Definitely. Yeah. Um, guys, hello thanks to everyone to around the world. And like I said, a special hello to all the people, in, uh, especially in Manchester and, and Salford, where I spent so much time. Um, and stay safe, man. And, and hopefully we'll speak to you soon. Absolutely. Guys, smash a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and all of that good stuff. And get in the comments. Do you agree with Mark that the, the priority should be a striker? There's been so much on this channel and just on social media of a lot of people saying centre-back is absolutely what we have to get. A central defensive midfielder is what we have to get. Forget everything else. That is a common thing. Mark, ex-pro, he's been there, he's done it. He's saying, listen, guys, get the striker. Let us know about Oli, what you think about his uh, situation as well. Is it right or wrong that he gets the extension? Do you agree with Mark that we are going in the right direction too? Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. We will see you very, very soon. Peace.